Welcome on board the uh, Genoa 64. This is uh, Genoa's new flagship, just launched. Uh, here we are in hall number one. Uh, the boat was really designed and built around four key concepts. The first concept was to enter the super yacht style. So that means uh, elegant lines, beautiful looking boat, uh, lots, to, lots of, uh, of uh, features and lots of comfort on board. Uh, the second thing was to develop what we call deck life, which means all of the life that you have on the exterior of the boat. You spend 80% of the time on board outside. This boat really gave uh, dedicated spaces for lounging, eating, cooking, resting, and so forth uh, throughout the exterior, with almost half of the, the length of the boat given over to, uh, to this exterior deck life uh, on board the boat. The third was to do, uh, was to do a, a, a lot of volume on the interior, so what we call the generosity of space, which was not to just make everything bigger, but really to provide uh, more storage, better showers, all kinds of uh, extra fittings uh, and uh, spaces. They were all very uh, studied by uh, Andrew Winch and his team. And the fourth point was really to engineer in the choices. So that to take uh, a production boat and to make a variety of different engineering choices, versions, options, technical uh, spaces and so forth that allow for, uh, for the client to really customize the boat but without going into a custom boat pricing to remain really at a production boat price but with lots and lots of features, really a way to customize the boat any way one would want to. Here we are at the helm of the Genoa 64. Uh, you can see we have a D4 uh, Volvo, 180 horsepower, electronic engine, which gives us electronic throttles, very easy to use. We have a standard uh, bow thruster and a tunnel. We have a uh, retractable stern thruster, which is an option, which is a fantastic, gives you fantastic control of the boat. All the, uh, the engine information is electronically uh, sent up here. Uh, you have uh, direct buttons for windlass. Uh, the captive winch, which runs the main sheet, and the Genoa furler, which is standard. So that really makes uh, for very easy sail handling. And of course, uh, multi-touch uh, GPS screen, AAS, radar, all of, the, all of the data coming back up here, including engine data, uh, cameras, and so forth. So really a lot of information uh, right at the helm for whoever's driving the boat. Just forward of the helm, we have a centralization of the sail area. So we have uh, two inches. We have a front winch, which is a 60, uh, which is a rewind winch, which means that it turns both ways. You can ease and, uh, and bring in a line electrically. That, that winch is standard. And then we have a 70 uh, winch here for the Genoa or used for the Code Zero, which is standard as manual and optional uh, as electric. Nice tailing bag here, brings in, uh, keeps all your lines uh, organized uh, on deck. We have uh, here the two consoles, and the consoles are fantastic. They lodge uh, a little bit of storage, a sink on the one side, and on the other side, we have a, uh, a full-sized uh, ice box area that can even make ice. Uh, so this is great to be able to run and grab uh, drinks without having to go below. And the last feature, which is really a nice feature, which makes the boat much more like a, a motor yacht or much like a vacation home, is to have a, uh, a grill or a plancha which comes up and immediately you have uh, an outdoor uh, cooking space that you would expect in a, in a vacation home. Here underneath the aft uh, sun decks here for the, for the back end of the cockpit. The second part of the cockpit, which is forward here, has uh, two symmetrical tables. So the tables can be in, a, in an upper position for dining or in a lower position for uh, sunbathing or for relaxing. You can see through most of the, the trip uh, that we just took, we had uh, one table down and one table up, which is a perfect combination, giving places for people to relax. And on the other side, you have uh, plenty of room for people to dine. Uh, four or five people can dine around this table using the chairs that we have uh, down below. And on, on the other side, of course, when you want to be uh, seven, eight, nine, ten people, you can, uh, you can uh, raise the other table. And, uh, and have a, a very large meal. But the advantage of having the, the two uh, symmetrical tables is that you still have a very good circulation around the boat. So if somebody wants to get up, to go get a bottle of wine, go to the bathroom, etc., they, they can get through the table very easily. All of this area of the cockpit is very protected by the, uh, by the spray hood, which has a, uh, a windscreen area at the bottom, so you can zip out the entire upper area, either just the window or the entire upper zone to have just the windscreen. Uh, it has built-in lighting. Uh, so it really is a very protective zone, and of course, when you couple that with the, uh, with the big bimini uh, aft, you can have a total protection from the sun, the wind, the cold, the rain, etc. And the other thing that is a nice feature of the boat is the uh, main sheet arch, 
which uh, means that you have no, uh, no lines in this forward end of the boat. You can see throughout this entire area here that there are no uh, sail handling, uh, there's no lines, there's nothing, uh, there's no equipment to access. So you really have uh, an area where your guests, your family, uh, the people you're sailing with are, uh, are not at all bothered uh, by that sail handling and all the sail handling functions are centralized for easy use by one or two people at the back end of the boat. The garage of the Juno 64 was specifically designed to handle large and heavy jet tenders or big rib tenders. You can see on this boat here we are equipped with a Williams 285 jet tender, which is a fantastic boat carrying three or four people at up to 40 knots. So really a fun toy, but also a great tender. Easy to go ashore and come back, and you can also do water skiing and wakeboarding with the boat. The advantage also of having a, a jet tender is that it's an inboard engine, which means that you don't have to worry about taking out a, a fuel tank, uh, putting an engine, uh, an outboard engine up onto an en outboard engine bracket. You really just tow the boat in and uh, put it away. The system that we developed here uh, to handle these tenders is like a small trailer. So the boat is hauled up onto the trailer using the winch, and then once it's secured to the trailer, which has a, a pivoting motion, all you have to do is uh, use the same winch to pull the boat up into the boat. As you can see, I was able to, to put into, uh, into the garage a tender weighing over 250 kilos with just the push of a button. Up on the bow of the Juno 64, we have a very large uh, uh, anchor roller uh, that takes the, uh, the large anchor. This anchor roller can be motorized as an able to, uh, to bring it back in, a pivoting anchor roller system, which when is equipped, comes into this zone here. When you have a fixed anchor roller as we have on this boat, this area here becomes uh, usable as a storage, great for uh, any kind of wet gear that you may have, hoses, fenders, etc. You have a very large uh, windlass here running a 14 millimeter chain, 100 meters of 14 millimeter chain, so very, uh, very good to uh, good ground tackle for all conditions. This boat is equipped with two, uh, two uh, uh, sails. We have 110% Genoa on the primary uh, forestay. This forestay has uh, is got an electric furler as uh, standard. Uh, and then here we've added a, uh, a second uh, furler with a uh, self-tacking uh, jib. This self-tacking jib is fantastic for conditions uh, as we had the other day uh, when you have over uh, 25, 30 knots of breeze and you want to do a little bit of upwind work. Uh, this is a great sail to, to haul out. You have also here on the foredeck uh, direct access into the sail locker. On this boat it's equipped as a sail locker and you can see there's lots of equipment on board, everything we needed to make a 2,500 mile passage. Uh, and uh, this can also be an area where we can put uh, a crew cabin. There's a secondary access to the interior, but we'll take a look at that when we get down the road. And here, when you look over the deck, you really get a sense of what Philippe Briand has brought to this project, which is to create a very, very elegant deck that has uh, an incredible amount of light, a incredible amount of space, uh, long windows, lots of opening hatches, uh, so really a, a, a great space to live. And you can see this flat foredeck here, which usually is uh, something you don't get on a smaller boat, is really uh, an upgrade when you get to a boat this size, because this becomes very usable space. You can bring your, your deck chairs up here, you can put out your sun mattresses, uh, and it becomes a whole other zone of the boat that on a smaller boat you're not, you're not used to using. So it's a, it's a fantastic space, and you get a real clear idea of the, of the deck lines and everything that Philippe has brought to the table on this boat. It's very much in that keeping with that super yacht style. A couple of other features that are very high-end type features are the use of a, uh, a tensioning system for the, the halyards. So here on this boat we have three furling sails. Main uh, is on a furling sail and the two furling uh, Genoa and jib. And you can see here that we can tension the halyards individually using the winch here at the bottom. And uh, then we have a retrieval line, of course, that you use when you want to uh, let off on the, on the line. But most of the time you don't mess around with these that much, you just want to tension and take a te some tension out from time to time and you do that with the winch here which eliminates having to have miles and miles of, uh, of uh, line in the cockpit and of course the loading up the cockpit or even the danger of accidentally opening a blocker uh, when, you're, uh, when you're in the cockpit. So this is something you see on the high-end yachts, big yachts. Uh, we wanted to bring that into this uh, boat to make it very, uh, very simple to use. The second thing that is really on a, something you'd find more on a super yacht is, uh, as you can see here, the main sheet, uh, which comes down and goes into the mast at this point, is actually going down to a captive uh, winch. So a captive winch is a drum that winds up the, the line. And uh, the advantage of that drum is that it, uh, you have a push button function at the helm. 
and when you uh, you can sheet in and sheet out uh, very easily uh, without leaving uh, without leaving the helm station without taking a line out of the self tailing really a very very easy use and when we were in gusty conditions the other day allows you to perfectly control uh, the main sheet tension uh, without running all over the boat and uh, uh, a fantastic option for people who are sailing with uh, very few people on board. Coming down below on the Juno 64, you really get to show off the, the work that uh, Andrew Winch and his team did uh, down here. You see uh, light woods, uh, very noble materials, uh, very high-end uh, things. Uh, he wanted to give the interior of this boat a, a contemporary feel, but without going too far, not, no, not avant-garde, and keeping with a very nautical spirit, which not only is part of Andrew Winch's DNA, but has also been a, a founding part of the, of the Juno DNA. So you'll find even in this contemporary atmosphere, things that are, are definitely nautical. So items like the, the, um, the lining along the hull with the lines in it, uh, you find a lot of stainless steel, you find the leather uh, covering the mast, the leather covering the handrails. Uh, that le leather and stainless steel are, are items that are, uh, that are uh, inexorably uh, mixed with, uh, with uh, nautical tradition. Uh, and so, and of course, the handrails and so forth create uh, very easy uh, uh, access down below as well as uh, uh, overhead. You have here uh, a couple of features of the boat. One is the, the saloon area. The saloon area is always uh, in this configuration. There's lots of different configurations of the boat, but here we have a saloon area with its standard table, which is a fixed table. We have the possibility here of putting a, a folding uh, table that is on a telescopic leg, if you wish to have that type of uh, table there. And we have uh, the other feature of the, of the interior that does not vary in terms of its location uh, is the galley. The first thing in the galley return is that we have, a, we have a removable tray here, which can be used as a serving tray to go to the exterior. We have in the, below the return here uh, a drinks locker. And one of the things we did with, uh, with this boat was we designed the galley not only with Andrew Winch's team, but with the input of a professional yacht chef. And she was able to bring small uh, ideas, small concepts to us, such as this drinks locker, which is accessible more to the exterior of the galley than the interior galley. So people who are coming to get uh, some juice, uh, some wine, a glass of water, a soda, or anything like this, can immediately have access to this area here, instead of going into the main fridges, which are used mainly for, for cooking. Very spacious galley, a galley where it's very easy to work as two people, but also very, it's small enough to work very well when underway. So you have plenty of good bracing positions, big, st big sinks, uh, you have a, a, a blower going outboard. You've got uh, here a, a, a range top and an oven that can be electric or gas uh, as you choose. You have full-sized household style Miele dishwasher. And you have a standard microwave from Miele that is here, uh, which can also be done in this area as a convection oven, vapor oven. Uh, so lots of different choices for, uh, for cooking on the boat. Lots of storage throughout that in the, be in the block here. And you can see another thing that, the, that uh, our, our yacht chef told us was it was very nice to be able for somebody to come and set the table uh, from here without having to come into the galley. So somebody can, can take the, the silverware out uh, to the main table or to the exterior tables without getting in the way of the people cooking. Back in the back part of the galley, we have the, the fridges. So we have a big, uh, a big upper fridge area here and we have two freezer drawers. So big freezer drawers with uh, plenty of uh, room for long passages. And then facing off on that is the uh, pantry area where we have uh, plenty of storage for food. So it's really a very nice galley. There was a lot of work put into the galley to make it very livable, but also to keep it open. It's very much part of the interior life. It's not stuck in a hole. You see out at the water, you have big hull ports, you have big uh, windows looking out. So it really is part of the life on board, which is the uh, a call mark of any uh, good family cruiser. Let's take a look at the forward cabins. On this boat, we have uh, two symmetrical forward cabins, because on this version we have a, an aft owner's cabin, which we'll take a look at in a second. The two forward cabins uh, have a, a very large double berth with storage underneath, storage up above, uh, big hull port, lots of opening hatches overhead, and a fantastic block of storage here with a, a large hanging locker. And you have uh, here uh, drawers that come out 100%, and of course go back in with, a, um, with the, uh, the dampeners but lots and lots of storage space uh, throughout these cabins, great berth. And then each one has its own uh, head and shower. 
you have a freshwater flush electric toilet, which is standard uh, throughout the boat. And you have this uh, nice shower compartment with a plexiglass door. And here on the, the starboard side, we have access in from the shower into the sail locker or crew cabin, depending on your setup. But this is a fantastic way to access the forward part of the boat in heavy weather or just to get some uh, tools and items that you might need uh, when working on the interior of the boat. One of the areas that we wanted to engineer in a bunch of different choices uh, for the clients was uh, this area here, the port side of the saloon. So in this boat here, we have a chart table that is coupled with a bar area that has a, uh, an opening uh, uh, drinks cabinet. This is very nice. If you do a lot of entertaining on board, you can put out breakfast, you can put out uh, evening drinks, you can put out snacks, uh, all of that in this great surface area here. Uh, so that's uh, for entertaining or for boats and management, that's a, a fantastic way to go. We also can equip this area here with a, uh, a very large sofa, deep sofa, so a, a, a very good sized uh, a place for relaxing and lounging. Or if you prefer to have the table here, we can actually add a sofa just to the table. So you have a combination sofa uh, and table with a movable armrest that becomes your backrest when you are sitting at a table. So that gives you three different, uh, very distinct choices uh, in this area of the boat. And secondly, uh, in this area, we have a choice uh, here. We, this boat is equipped with a lateral cabin. So the lateral cabin uh, has the advantage of, of creating extra, extra uh, berths. You have an upper and lower single berth. The upper berth is foldable to become the backrest of the lower berth, which makes it into more of a sofa. And in this cabin, we have room for the uh, washer and dryer unit, which is situated here. And then, of course, plenty of storage up above that as well. And you'll find also here the front access into the engine room. So the engine room, which is uh, where we really wanted to centralize everything that needed to have uh, regular maintenance, anything that made noise or vibration is all in this uh, engine room area. So obviously you'll find the engine, but you also have the 60,000 BTUs of uh, air conditioning compressors. So there's no compressor noise anywhere else throughout the boat. You have the high pressure pump for the water maker. You have the fresh water pump and all of the circulation pumps for the air conditioning. So really a very, very quiet boat with this door closed. And when you open it up, you have several of these access points uh, around the boat. And that creates uh, very, very easy maintenance uh, and very easy access to all of the systems. Headed back towards the uh, aft owner's cabin, uh, just behind the galley, we find another one of the spaces that can be equipped with a variety of different uh, functions. In this case, the boat is equipped with a uh, day head, which is also, of course, the head for the lateral cabin. But this uh, space can also be equipped as a workshop with a uh, table uh, with lots of plugs for charging your various uh, tools, as well as cabinets and everything for storage, uh, for tools, spares, etc. So people who are going a long way and want to have a, a, an internal workshop in the boat can go into the space as well. And then as we move aft, we walk right into the aft owner's cabin, which is a fantastic space on board, really given over a lot of space uh, to the cabin uh, uh, back here. Uh, you can have, of course, an aft or a forward owner's cabin. In both cases, the, the, uh, the equipment is the same. Both, uh, both, ca uh, both owner's cabins have a, meter, a one meter 80 wide bed that is over two meters long. So a very good size bed, big storage cabinets. You have a nice sofa here off the side, hall ports, uh, opening uh, uh, goal windows above. A couple of nice uh, details, including the lamps uh, done by, uh, designed by Andrew Winch. Uh, as well as uh, some nice technical details like the use of uh, USB plugs in order to charge uh, phones, tablets, etc. And you have here a very nice little desk area uh, for, uh, for working. And you have a fantastic storage again here, a double block of storage that you find uh, for hanging lockers and then a very large drawer space throughout the boat. So really a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, storage on the boat. And you have uh, these, these goal windows that, that open up here, create what is often lacking in aft cabin boats, which is to have lots of light, ventilation, and so forth in the back. And even a ladder comes with the boat here, and the ladder allows you to come in and out uh, of the boat. Uh, so in the morning, if you want to get up and go for a swim, you don't have to come out through everybody else's uh, spaces. You can, you can head right out into the cockpit uh, at your leisure. And this, this uh, cabin, of course, has its own uh, head compartment. So very spacious head compartment with a, uh, a fully separate shower. And in this shower compartment, you find also the second access door into the uh, engine compartment, which gives you direct access to uh, filters uh, and, uh, and uh, the air conditioning system. 
So really a, a fantastic space for the owner, in this case in the aft cabin, uh, but also available uh, as a forward owner's cabin version as well. One of the key advantages of the raised flooring in the, in the Genoa 64, besides giving you uh, fantastic views of the exterior through the, the windows, is that we have room underneath the floor to put a lot of the technical systems. So here we have uh, the Onan generator of 17.5 kilowatts, so providing all of the power you need uh, on board to run air conditioning and all of the onboard systems. But under the floor you'll also find the 830 liters uh, of, uh, of fuel and the 1,000 liters of water. So really all of that right where you want it, low in the boat, center line, uh, under the floor. Just beside the uh, companionway entrance, you'll find really the, the, the sort of the, 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 the operation panel uh, for the boat. So you have a, an electrical panel that gives you all of your daily functions, fridges, instruments, pumps, lights, etc., all on this uh, panel here, along with your battery switches. So uh, everything you need to do to run the boat uh, on a daily basis. And then you have uh, this very innovative touch panel, which gives you the possibility of going in and looking at uh, battery usage, uh, charge levels, battery temperatures, uh, as well as uh, information on the tanks, such as the fresh water tanks, the three tanks here, uh, showing their percentages, the fuel tanks, and, and the holding tanks are all, uh, are all in here. You can set different alarms for high level, low level, etc. You have uh, direct access to all of the lighting, so you can turn the lighting on and off, or turn off all the lighting as you leave the boat. And you also can manage between uh, uh, shore power or genset systems. You, even, you can even start the genset right here uh, from this panel. So everything is really at your fingertips, very, very easy to use, and replaces lots and lots of very complicated panels uh, that we've had in the past. So this is, gives you a very quick and easy readout of the boat, and of course allows you to control all of the onboard systems. Thank you for taking this tour of the Genoa 64 with us. It's a, a boat that, uh, that we are we're very happy to present to you. The boat will be uh, visible uh, at the Cannes Boat Show in September, so please come and take a look at it or contact us if you'd like to see it in person. And of course, you can find all the information on this uh, boat at our website at Genoa.com.